Hey, hey friends, it's Cory from Hey Let's Make Stuff. In today's video, we're going to be making glass cutting boards. If you've been around the sublimation world any length of time, you'll know that you can't actually sublimate on glass. You need a polyester or poly coating to be able to sublimate. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you two ways to sublimate on glass cutting boards. The first is using a sublimation specific blank, and the second is using an inexpensive Dollar Tree cutting board. I think you're gonna like both of them and they both have their pros and cons, so let's get started. Let's talk about why you might wanna have a glass cutting board. To start, they can be more hygienic and easier to clean than something like wood or plastic. That being said, I don't personally use glass cutting boards to cut. That's because it can dull your knives. I actually have several glass cutting boards and I pretty much use them for charcuterie and other snacks. Um, that way I'm not dulling my knives, but I'm still able to use them. That being said, there are people that just prefer to use glass cutting boards and if that's you, go for it. So before we get into what we need to make this project, I wanna talk a little bit about glass cutting board sizing because that will probably determine which route you're gonna go. Are you gonna do the sublimation specific cutting board or are you gonna go with the Dollar Tree version? I did a lot of research on sublimation specific cutting boards and almost all of them start at at least 11 inches wide, which means that if you want to do a full bleed image, you're going to need a bigger printer or you're going to need to piece your image together. The cutting board that you'll see most often on places like Amazon and even a lot of other retails is 11 by eight. I also ordered some round sublimation cutting boards without looking at the size and they are nearly 12 inches around, which means that I can't even use my um, 11 by 17 paper in my sawgrass. I can use the bypass tray because I can print on 13 by 19, but that's a lot of setup to be able to make a cutting board. And I couldn't really find many sublimation cutting boards at all that were smaller than these sizes. When I went to the Dollar Tree to find cutting boards, I found these two versions, the square version and the round version, and they're both eight inches across. So these are much more accessible if you have a printer that will only print eight and a half by 11. So if you want to do sublimation specific cutting boards with a bleed so that the image goes off the edge, you will need that bigger printer. That being said, you could put a smaller image on here. I just did a video about sublimation cheese boards and that type of image would work really well. I'll go ahead and link that. Um, but if you wanna do a full bleed image on the sublimation specific cutting boards, you will need that bigger printer. If you wanna do the smaller Dollar Tree hack, you can use any sublimation printer you'd like. All right, let's talk about what you're going to need to make this project. If you're making the sublimation specific uh, cutting board, you're going to need some supplies. And if you're making the Dollar Tree version, you're gonna need other, but I'm gonna lay them all out here and then show you the process so you can decide which one you wanna make. To start, you're gonna need a sublimation printer with sublimation paper. Because I'm doing a full bleed on this 11 inch cutting board, I do need that larger size. So I'm going to be using my Sawgrass SG-1000 and printing on 11 and a half by 17 paper. Then of course you will need your cutting board. Again, I have the sublimation specific cutting board as well as this round one from the Dollar Tree. You will also need alcohol and a microfiber cloth to clean your blank before you press it. You'll need some heat resistant gloves, heat resistant tape and butcher paper. If you're doing the Dollar Tree hack, you'll need a few other supplies. So you'll need a lamination pouch. Now this is exactly the type of lamination pouch that elementary school teachers use to laminate things. It's got two layers and we're gonna cut those apart, but you will need one of these. And then I find that a craft mat, like a self-healing crafting mat and a craft knife are also helpful. And then finally, you will need a heat press. I'm using my Walla press from Heat Transfer Warehouse. It is a 15 by 15 inch clamshell press. I really love it. You can also use a handheld press like an easy press. My one caveat there is to use a more firm mat underneath your project and not the easy press mat. It's just too squishy. I will go ahead and link a wool mat I like down in the supply list. I have a big bundle of sublimation files that you can download for free for this project and for anything else you'd like to make. It includes files that will work on rectangular cutting boards, circular cutting boards, and square cutting boards, and they are one for each season in sort of a stained glass style. These type of files look so good on glass and I have them for you for free. To get this file for free, you can go to my craft library, heyletsmakestuff.com slash library. If you don't already have the password, you can request it. And then you can enter it on that same page to log into my craft library. From there, there are two ways to find this file. The first is to scroll down just a little bit and you'll see a button for sublimation. Click that and it will take you to the sublimation section. The other way is to do a find on the page. So if you're on a PC, try control F. If you're on a Mac, command F and then type in the number. The number of this file is S20. So you'll You'll be looking for S20 on that page and there will be two links. The first link is the download link. Click that link and it will download a zip with the PNGs for this project inside. The second link is a link to the blog post for this video if you want to learn more. I originally wanted to print my images through Sawgrass's Printmate, but I have been having some issues with their software lately, so I'm going to use Photoshop. You can use just about any program to print your sublimation image, so whatever you're used to will work. Let's pop into Photoshop and print our image. 
I've opened my file here in Photoshop. Now this is the summer file and I'm going to be using it on that rectangular sublimation specific cutting board. You can see over here on the right that my image is much too big, so I'm going to go ahead and make the height 8.25 inches. That'll make it just slightly larger than my actual blank, so I won't have any white around the edges. Now I have all these extra pixels in Photoshop, so I'm going to go to Image, Trim, and I'm going to trim off those transparent pixels. Now my image is ready to print, so I'm going to hit Print, and I'm going to choose my Sawgrass SG-1000. I'm going to go to the Print Settings, and I'm going to choose the tabloid size paper. Click OK. Now you can see that my image fits nicely on that larger sheet of paper. Now with almost every other sublimation project, we would reverse our image. But because we're pressing this from the back, this is one of the few cases where we don't reverse our image. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit print. Then I'm going to do the same thing for my round cutting board. So I have my image circle here. I'm gonna change it to 8.25 just to make it a little bit bigger than my cutting board. I'm gonna trim those extra pixels and then I'm going to print it. Start by setting your heat press. For this project, we're gonna be using 400 degrees for 240 seconds, so it is quite a long press. You'll want to make sure that you are double checking your pressure. You want firm pressure, not super heavy, but firm pressure. So you'll wanna check that before your press gets really hot. So let's start with the sublimation specific cutting board. What makes it sublimation specific? It has that white poly coating on it already. So this makes it very easy to sublimate and the design is gonna be very vibrant because we have that white background. Next, we'll use alcohol and a microfiber cloth to clean our blank. I prefer alcohol on hard blanks like this because a lint roller doesn't really pick up any of the oils that um, happen with your fingerprints. The alcohol does just a much better job. So make sure you clean the entire thing. Once the alcohol has evaporated, we can add our image. So I find it actually easier to add the image upside down. So I've got my image here and I'm going to add my blank. Now the image is gonna be a little bit long for this specific blank, but I wanted to give you guys options. So I am gonna cheat it over here to the right because I want the most of that uh, little Volkswagen that I can. And then I'm gonna tape it from the back. I found that this is just so much easier uh, for doing full bleed images. this. Now we are ready to press. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my heat press drawer and I'm going to add two pieces of butcher paper here. Mostly this is to just protect the bottom pad of my press from the ink that um, is not on the cutting board. Then I'm going to place my cutting board with the paper side up, facing up here, just like that. I'm going to make sure it's centered. And then I'm gonna add two more sheets of butcher paper over my image to protect my press plate from any ink blow through through the paper. I'm going to press this project for that 240 seconds. When it is done, it's gonna be very hot, so I am gonna remove it with my heat resistant gloves. All right, it's still pretty warm, but we can remove the paper. Now from the back, it doesn't look all that special. If we flip it over here, look how good this looks. It is so bright and so vibrant. I think it looks absolutely amazing. Next up, let's do the cutting board from the Dollar Tree. So this requires a little bit more because this is not a sublimation specific blank. So to start, we need to remove these little plastic feet. I'm just gonna pull them up here. I'm gonna set them where I'm gonna find them because I always lose them. I'll set them over here on the side, just like this. We are gonna be sublimating the back smooth side of this blank. So this side has a little bit of texture, but the back where the feet were is the side we're gonna sublimate. So grab your alcohol and you really need to clean the back of this pretty well. One, it's probably been sitting in a Dollar Tree for a couple months. And then two, you may have some residue from those feet. And I found that if you work really hard with the alcohol, you can get that up. You can also use Goo Gone or some other sort of adhesive remover if you'd like but with a little scrubbing, the alcohol will work. Now we basically need to hack this cutting board to be able to sublimate on it. You can't sublimate directly on glass. We need something that has that sort of poly content and we're gonna use a laminate sheet. So like I said, this is the same type of laminate sheet the kindergartner, you know, kindergarten teacher would use. And I'm basically just gonna cut a piece that is the size of my uh, circle here. I'm just make it a little bit larger, just like this. Now we're going to adhere this laminate sheet to the glass. So to do this, I'm just gonna set this inside my heat press with that, remember that smooth side up and then the cloudy side of the laminate sheet down. And I'm gonna press this at 400 for 60 seconds and that will basically laminate our glass. Now I'm gonna show a little bit in the overhead video here that 
even with that press, sometimes I end up with bubbles. And I've not been able to get this to have absolutely zero bubbles, which is kind of annoying. But I do find that if I use a brayer, I can push out a lot of those bubbles. You may still be able to see them, but they are a lot better than they are if you don't use this little tip here. Now we need to trim the excess laminate sheet from around the edge of the glass. That's where the cutting mat and the craft knife come in ha uh, handy. I would say that scissors would be very difficult to do this. Um, because this is so warm, it is actually warping my board just a little bit. Thankfully, it will go back to normal. I have learned that. So basically just trace around the edge here. The cutting board is still very hot. Now we have that laminate on the back of the glass and we can actually sublimate on that laminate. So I'm gonna pull over my image. And again, we are doing the side with the laminate down here. I'm gonna put it in the middle of my image just like this. And then I'm gonna use heat resistant tape to tape my board to my image. Again, this image is still pretty darn hot. I did not wait for it to cool down. And then we're gonna press it just like the other one for 240 seconds at 400 degrees. Start by putting a piece of butcher paper in your heat press. And then I'm gonna put my heat resistant gloves back on so I don't burn myself. I'm going to put it with the paper facing up and the blank there. And then another piece of butcher paper just like this. And then I'm gonna press for 240 seconds. All right, let's go ahead and peel this back. All right, and here we have our Dollar Tree version. If I pick it up, you can see that it is actually clear. It's really, really pretty. All right, so here I have all four of my seasons for my cutting boards. I've got two that are sublimation specific and two that I've used the Dollar Tree cutting boards. Let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each. So with the sublimation specific cutting boards, they are easy to use, they are faster to make, and they require no preparation. You also get a professional look, and because of that white, the colors really pop. The cons to these is that they are more expensive, and if you wanna do a full bleed image, you're gonna need that bigger printer. And then finally, because it does have that white coating, it doesn't let the light shine through. So these are sort of clear and you can see through them. You won't get that with a sublimation specific blank. The Dollar Tree blanks, on the other hand, are less expensive and you can use any sublimation printer to make them. They also make really good sun catchers and they have just a different look because they don't have that white coating and you can see through them. They do, however, take more prep work, they take longer to make, and I do feel like you get sort of a less than professional finish just because you can kind of see those bubbles sometimes and you may not trim that laminate sheet perfectly around the edge. And if you really want your images to pop, you're not gonna get that white background, you'll be able to see through, so they're just not gonna pop quite as much. I think both options are really pretty. I would prefer the sublimation specific boards for something like a charcuterie board or even a regular cutting board. Whereas I think the Dollar Tree boards make really beautiful sun catchers. You can actually buy a hanging kit that's meant for stained glass so that you can actually hang these from your window. The light comes through and they're really, really pretty. And that is my tutorial on how to make sublimation cutting boards two different ways. I would love to know in the comments which way you prefer, which of these options you might wanna make yourself. If you found this video helpful or inspiring, I really would appreciate a like. Follow my channel for more sublimation, cricket, and laser content. I'll see you next time.